Hey guys, welcome to another story. Uh, we introduced what I consider one of the most terrifying stories in all of the New Testament the other day. And so today I invite you to join me as we dig in to the closing words that Jesus had for that message called the Sermon on the Mount. today comes from the last part of what's probably the most famous sermon in all of the Bible. Jesus, in several different places in Scripture, is recorded as sharing what's called the Sermon on the Mount, where he gives a variety of information to who knows how many followers that were listening, right? But, but he talks about how they should be living their lives if they are truly followers of Jehovah God. And so uh, our story today comes from the very end of this passage. And here is where our story begins. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but rather the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonderful works in your name? Then I will say to them, depart from me, those of you who practice lawlessness or wickedness, because I never knew you. And there's our story from God's word. And we'll look at the rest of this in the next video. But Wow, you know, I, I wonder, what do you think it might have been like to have been the, the listeners to this message? And you're listening to all this practical stuff. And then he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. I, I wonder, what might have been going through their minds as they hear this message uh, from, from this man that they're still trying to get a handle on, right? Yeah, I, I think some of them might have been confused or uh, puzzled. Uh, we see later on in the story, and we'll talk about this uh, maybe even next week, some were astonished you know, at, at what he was teaching. But let's look at the first part of this story. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So, huh. Lord, Lord. Somebody saying, Lord, Lord. Uh, I mean, what, what might we learn about what they think of themselves? Does it seem as if they thought they were going to heaven or not? Huh. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Uh, saying, Lord, Lord. I mean, what... What might that tell us about, say, if somebody's saying, Lord, Lord, to Jesus? I mean, what, what might we learn about that kind of person? What about that title, Lord? Does it seem like somebody saying that would be submitting themselves in their mind to the one they're saying that to? Huh. Lord, Lord. I mean, dudes... Does it, does it seem like they would think they were saying, okay, you're, you're, you're the boss of me, for lack of a better term? Uh. But he said, just saying that isn't enough. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but rather the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Right? So... What is, what is the key here, as far as Jesus' words? Doing the will of the Father who is in heaven. Wow. What might that tell us about Jesus' expectation? Is, uh, is, is, is he 
I mean, in, in the church in America, we have taught for years that salvation is by faith, right? I mean, that Bible says that later on. Okay, so don't 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 click heretic on the bottom of this, right? But does faith does based on what Jesus said here, should should faith should we expect faith to have some kind of act? Did, does it seem that Jesus? expected faith to have some kind of action to it. Hmm. Well, let's look at the second part of the story because it gets even more confusing, right? He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonderful works in your name? So let's, let's look at those. Now, so does do we see Jesus going, no, you didn't do those things. No, we don't see him doing that. I mean, so how could Jesus have responded to this? Could he, could, could he have said, you, you, didn't, you didn't really do those things. You thought you did those things. But does he say that? So I wonder, what, what about these people? What can we learn about these people? Does it seem they were actually proclaiming God's word? Were they actually casting out demons? Were they actually doing some versions say miraculous works? Huh. Does it, does it seem that these folks thought they were okay in the sight of God? Yeah. Lord, Lord, haven't we done this? So it, when it comes to the judgment, they're like, wait, 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 we were doing these things. Hmm. Huh. Well, I wonder what we might learn about percentages here. Because how does he start it off? Yeah, he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied, cast out demons, done many wonderful works? Huh. And then Jesus says, I'm going to say to them, depart from me those of you who practice lawlessness, because I never knew you, right? Wow. Uh, so what might we learn about Jesus from the fact that he is in the place where he can say, depart from me? I mean, does, does it seem like he is in a place of authority when it comes to judging? Hmm. And now these folks, uh, they, they, so they've, they've prophesied, they've cast out demons, they've done many wonderful works, and yet Jesus says they are practicing lawlessness. So I, I wonder what we might learn about doing good things in Christ's name. Have I not done many, uh, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonderful works in your name? But, I mean, if, if these things are not actually of him, and he said, those of you who practice wickedness, do you see, a, do you see something, a connection there? That if you're doing things, even though they might seem good, but they're, they're not actually of the Lord, are those things good or bad? Huh. Yeah, it, it seems like if you're doing some things that are not of God, even though they would seem like good things, that, that God's view of those that of those things is practicing evil. I wonder today, are, are there still people who think they're doing things for God but end up practicing evil or wickedness? Yeah, I think I think they probably do. I wonder in your mind, I mean, you can put down in the comment section, what are some things you can think of that people do that end up being wicked things? I, I can think of one just really quickly. What about going to church? You say, wait, 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 wait. You're saying going to church can be wicked? Well, let me ask you a question. If a person goes into a building, attends a service, and thinks that's going to be enough to get them into heaven. 
and yet they reject the sacrifice of Christ. They reject submitting their lives to Christ, putting their faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. If they depend on that instead of Jesus, if they depend on their attendance, would that make attendance in a church a wicked thing? If it replaces the best thing? What about giving? You know, I'm, I'm all for giving. I, I've been a professional minister for many years, so giving has been an integral part of my life in ministry, right? Uh, I've been a beneficiary of, of people's faithfulness to give. But what if people are giving to get God's attention, to get God's approval? Is that then a good thing? Or when it comes to their judgment before Jesus, could it be a bad thing? What about in your life? Can you think of things in your life that, that uh, you have done or are doing that, that your reasoning for doing them might not have been proper? You know, I, I, I can think of times in my life when I've actually witnessed to people and, and I was witnessing to check off a box not because I had a, a real concern for the people I was talking to. Uh, I hate to admit that. It's embarrassing, but it's, but it's true. I would love to see some of the other things you have here. This In our next story, we're going to look at, uh, at, at Jesus' expectation of obedience as we continue on with the rest of this story. If you've not subscribed to the channel, I would invite you to do that. Uh, Butch Vernon STS YouTube. Uh, but also, I would love to see your comments. It, it, it just... Uh, I, you guys have taught me so much over the comments that I've seen on Facebook or on YouTube. You see things that I, I can't see from my experience, especially for our folks who might not be from the West. If you're watching this, I would love to see some of your responses. But until the next time, keep on telling those Bible stories.